Hey YouTube, Jonesy here. I've been putting off making a video um, for obvious reasons. Trying to talk to a camera or a phone is seems a bit unnatural if you're not used to it. Um, I love talking to people and um, I love sharing my life experiences and that's why I'm making this video, particularly for uh, my Mahindra S11. But um, just want to take this opportunity to say that um, you know, uh, life isn't always easy, but it's it's really important to make time for people that um, care about you and um, want to help you and have your best interests at heart. And uh, <laughs> it's just been a crazy... I've had some crazy uh, stuff happening lately just with um, family life and, and legal issues and things like that. And um, the Mahindra community... <laughs> um, the amount of people I've met just from buying this car and being an enthusiast, it's just been incredible. Um, I'm just sitting up in my rooftop tent at the moment, just enjoying nature. That's my uh, <coughs> local inlet, uh, just uh, north of um, Bustleton, uh, Wander Up Inlet, just there. The coast is literally like 200 metres that way. It's just beautiful. But um, yeah, the Mahindra community. Um, just want to give a little bit of a shout out to... Um, Mahindra Club Australia, met most of the guys on there when I first um, bought my Mahindra, sort of did my research because it's sort of, you know, join as you want and ask questions and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I uh, I bought my Mahindra because I noticed um, Ruthie was endorsing it and I knew the reasons behind it. I knew it was because, you know, he wasn't getting paid to drive one. He, he drove multiple vehicles, um, you know, a few Chinese cars, a couple of Indian cars, some Japanese cars that aren't even made in Japan anymore. Not mentioning any names. Toyota, um, and, and he and he chose to he chose to drive the Mahindra, and I just thought um, that really speaks volumes about the actual car itself and uh, the kind of people that drive them. Um, and I think, in my opinion, the kind of people that buy and own and drive Mahindras are looking for well, good value. They're not, not looking. They're looking to try and save some money because, let's face it. You know, times are hard at the moment financially. Um, yeah, they want something that's reliable, robust. Um, you know, there's the exception. Um, there's a couple of uh, online um, personalities, I guess you could say, um, that had had the best intentions and bought Mahindras and not had great luck. In fact, I'd go as far as to say they actually bought a lemon, which is really unfortunate. Um, as far as actually Mahindra is concerned, um, you know, they make some amazing products. I think the real downside, in my opinion, <coughs> give you a bit of a look at the view around, the bit of a downside, in my opinion, is um, parts availability, um, just having dealers that are all on board as well. You know, I've had some, I bought my Mahindra from Magic Group up in Perth. And that was a decision to go there and not go to my local dealer. I'm not going to mention who they are, but I was having dramas with them. Um, just ridiculous stuff. <laughs> like, you're not even allowed to test drive a car. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, I'll stop waffling. A uh, couple of honourable mentions. Um, I'm not going to say who exactly, but my mate Dion, you know who you are. Mad respect, mate. Um, glad you made it over to Australia and... Glad your daughter's arrived here safely as well, your newborn baby girl. Congratulations. And just a couple of other people I'd like to mention too. Um, Daniel Snare. I met him on Mahindra Adventure up in Perth. He's Ruthie's photographer. Real down-to-earth, genuine kind of guy. Um, loves Mahindras as well. Bought himself a Scorpio. He used to have an old Triton and um, sort of wasn't cutting the, cutting the cake, uh, so as to say. 
and then he's really been enjoying the practicality and versatility out of his. Arnie from um, up north Queensland. Um, he also knows Ben from um, Newcastle, um, Rybuck uh, Engineering uh, from 4AM Outdoors, who built up Ruthie's car. Uh, they've well, they uh, Ben's actually got the Guinness World Record for the fastest crossing, um, so that was really cool. Uh, Gene from Total Driver, he was the guy that um, hosts the Mahindra Adventures, which are held quite regularly uh, every few months in Australia. Um, he plans them, um, does all the catering, all that kind of stuff. Um, real character too, nice guy, um, real genuine guy, businessman. So nice to meet him. Um, and then in WA, we've got a couple of the locals too, like. Um, Salty, you know, he's pretty keen. He's, he's a real advocate for Mahindra. He's a good dude. So I don't know if you guys know him. Um, there's Outboard, Outback Outlaw. I just met him recently online. Uh, he's got a couple of Mahindras. Um, there's Valley Express, you know, they've got, um, uh, I think it's about four or five, maybe even six utes, and most of them have got well over 600,000 Ks. So that's saying something about the quality and longevity. They, they've had, uh, you know, I think they've done maybe water pumps and timing chains and that's about it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. Um, anyway, I'll stop, <laughs> try not waffle too much. Just check out this view though, eh? Hey? The sun's just come out, it's just been raining. I've got my sky roof in my San Hema rooftop tent. Um, I've only had it for a short period. I've only done a couple of nights camping, so I can't really give you a, a review on that, but I can show you what it looks like. Um, but yeah, similar setup to Ruthie. Got a roof rack platform, homemade one. <laughs> My old rhino rack feet, carved it out. Put the platform on there, bolted it together on my Mahindra. But um, yeah, I'll give you a look around anyway. Upgraded the ladder, got wider rungs on there. The one that came with the San Hema was a bit crap and it broke, so I've got a no bull. Uh, I've got a bullproof one on there now. Best thing about this platform, it's like a little mini balcony. I can easily fold up my tent. I've got a bit of shelter, I can put my shoes and crap when I'm climbing up, you know, because the pillows don't fit in there like my old king's tent. Um, I quite often go for a surf and I can just park up at the beach front, go for a surf, pull up and watch the waves and have a beer and just soak it in and just, yeah, it's so good. Love it. A bit of a rainbow over there. Beach just there. Anyway, I've been putting this video off for months, you know. It's always never the right time. Um, you know, I don't have any camera gear. I just got my dodgy old phone, but Ruthie just did an upload recently doing some gold prospecting and um, showing everyone his S11. I thought, stuff it, why don't I just stop making excuses and get out and show us? Anyway, this is my 2023 model S11. Um, I'll admit, I haven't done a lot of driving in it. It's mainly been a fun car. I've just started dailying it because I bought my wife. Uh, a replacement vehicle for the one I rode off. That's another story for later. Interesting, still going on, still dealing with that at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, long story short, love this car. I've got a whole list of pros and cons and, and issues that I've had and also research and the issues I noticed that other people have had, um, which I will do in another video. This is just gonna be a bit of an overview. Um, so, I'll explain a bit about what's going on here. I know it's a bit in your face. Good old Timu, I think that's like probably $60 worth of stickers there. For those South African viewers, yes, the Karoo sticker is on the wrong way around, but I did that to go in with my homemade decals on the back. <laughs> um, a couple of contacts in India sent me over this cool grill. Um, I had the cops on my butt um, hassling me about it because it lights up, so I had to rip that out. Just got some daytime running lights in the grill now. Yep, paying homage to the 79 because, you know, who needs a 79 when you've got a carry cruiser? <laughs> um, yeah, just couldn't help myself. I've got plans on putting a bar in there, so I, I didn't feel bad about hacking up the front bumper. I actually wiped out a um, reflector on the highway doing 110 and bent in the little, it's a very tinny support in behind. It's just a temporary thing, you know, you rip it off, put your bar on. Um, I managed to straighten it out and straighten the bar up a bit, so that's not too bad. Um, but yeah, do a bit of a walk around. Um, by the way, that's another thing the coppers didn't like. I always, I use my recovery point every other weekend because I'm always out bush. And uh, 
yeah, I can get a yellow sticker for that apparently. So just word of warning, don't leave one in there. Don't listen, don't do what I do, do as I say. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what am I gonna say? Oh, I've got a bit of a rub in the front wheel here. In a guard's sort of come out a bit and it's been rubbing on the front tire. That's my spare, that's why it looks like it's got heaps of rubber on it because it's pretty much brand new. Um, I did a two inch lift with some um, uh, 50 mil extended shackles in the rear with greasable, knuckles, uh, greasable um, shackles. Um, so yeah, that gave me two inch lift. Um, even then with a the, with the lift, if you've got the 16 inch rims, they've got a really narrow offset and they are literally rubbing on the chassis at full flex. Um, that's still got the torsion bar in the front. Um, speaking of torsion bars, I actually busted the front driver's side torsion bar. I don't know exactly how it happened, but uh, my local dealer won't mention their names. They're trying to basically tell me I had a collision and it wasn't covered under warranty. So, you know, it's only a cheap part, but still it's the principle. Wasn't too happy about that. Um, yeah, the little hubcaps that go over the front um, kind of look like an old chariot, so I pulled them off. These are just automatic locking hubs. Um, so I'll be taking those off and putting in some manual locking hubs. I've got a um, go anywhere. Mind the junk, I just jumped in the car last minute. Uh, locker. So I'm gonna, there's an English bloke that's gonna be installing that for me very shortly because apparently it's got a Land Rover front diff. Um, ben from 4am could probably confirm this. Or his son, if you're watching this, mate. I think, what's your name? Noah? Um, another another legend. Loves his landies. Anyways. Um, yeah, side steps are pretty tinny. Um, I came down pretty hard on mine. It was driver error. And I actually pushed it up into the frame. Um, as you can see, it's made contact with the chassis. Starting to get a bit of a rust forming there where the paint's cracked off, so I'm going to have to get onto that pretty quick, smart. Um, but everything else has been pretty good. Uh, the paint on the, the diffs has been a bit crappy, a bit rusty. Uh, the actual chassis and that's pretty good. Um, I keep on top of it. I rinse it off and I spray it with um, lanolin, as suggested by Ruthie. And it does work good, but it does make the sand stick, so it's not a perfect uh, option. I think um, Salty Captain do um, a chassis spray now where it's non-stick and it's pretty good. It protects you from rust. Yes, as you can see, there's an exhaust flange there. My muffler um, got crushed out four-wheel driving. Uh, it was kind of exposed. Some of the exhausts are routed differently. There's one on the previous S10 model where it was actually came underneath the chassis rail and it was squashed right up like a grape. Um, not ideal. Definitely a point of restriction. Um, so yeah, I pulled my muffler off anyway. Um, bit of bit of work's been going on. This canopy here, this came off a uh, ten-year-old S6, I think it was, just a single cab. Um, so it was a lot longer. I had it chopped up. Um, another story behind that: the guy ended up having an accident and wasn't wearing any PPE and took out his two front teeth and cut his lip open with a cut off saw and there was blood everywhere and my car was parked up for a couple of weeks because I couldn't get it, couldn't get a hold of it because he had half done the job. That was fun. <laughs> um, anyway, that aside, canvas is on there. Um, I've, re I've conditioned it with some Mr. Black by Bowden's. I highly recommend if you've got any black plastic or tires or hoses or stuff that's faded and you want to make it look real nice, Mr. Black, way to go. Um, it wasn't too bad to start with, but it had started fading. If you actually look at the canvas, it's a more of a tan colour and it's faded there, been out in the sun. But even the even the actual um, vinyl came up pretty good. Like there's a few scratches where I went a bit hard on it, but that, that was pretty smoky when I bought it, and I've got it looking nice again. Uh, a couple of Road Vision reverse lights. They're not yet hooked up. Um, I've just been picking up some uh, rubbish off the along the coastline cray pots and stuff stuff that's been washing up so it's a bit of a mess in here at the moment but um i'm in the process of building some drawers which are going to be level with the top of the wheel arch i uh, just picked up these nylon sliders today um i don't think they're teflon but they're like industrial strength so they should they're sliders for the drawers i'm going to be building uh there's some cutouts here which as you can see um it doesn't look very supported but i am building some supports into it the cable for the actual um, latch is right there, so I couldn't come out any further. So I've tried to, I'm gonna be bracing that up anyway, but it's good, it's it's wet storage. 
you got your little drainage points in here so if you've got a dirty snap strap or gloves or recovery gear you can just chuck it in there you're not putting crap in your cab way in your tub where it's nice and clean um so i'm basically going to have a an um a latching uh chopping board sort of like a uh, like a door that hinges with a gas strut because i use this as my chopping board and cooking prepping area um i've got a fridge that'll be on a lean facing out this side of the car um so i'll have access to that on the top of it um some compressors don't like running on angles but um i'm pretty sure the angles do so that shouldn't be a problem i'm gonna have a switchboard going up here which i've got uh 230 amp power lithium with a 40 amp dc dc charger which has got a monitor for inside so that's going to be cool um because the fridge is going to be on an angle i'll have the compressor and a little reel mounted just in that little gap in the side there so that'll save a bit there won't be any wasted space um anyway these tail lights not sure if all the viewers are aware of what the factory tail lights look like on a Mahindra, but they look like they're fresh out of the 80s. Um, pretty generic. Uh, I just love LEDs. I love lights. I've wrecked plenty of cars hacking things up before, so I've learned a bit over the years. These are fully watertight, waterproof. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm not quite finished with them yet. All the moldings in place and intact. I just need to get some bog and shape it, and then I'll probably end up Raptor coating it. This will be getting another fresh coat of Raptor once it's all, once everything's all planned out. Uh, you might have noticed the snatch mud flaps. Um, yeah, the factory ones, they're okay. The front ones got ripped off pretty quick. My brother's black edition, his front mud flaps get ripped off as well. Um, show you a bit in the cab. Nothing really exciting to see here. Um, people complain about the position of the switches for put your windows up and down they're like oh you know your arm rests here but then you have to put your hand back to do the switches uh, that's just petty in my opinion everything's pretty cool in here the arm rest um when my missus was driving it she bent it out quite a quite regularly so it seems to have gotten a little bit weak over the the last year that we've had it year and a half actually it's almost been two years i've had this car i can't even remember. i can't believe it's been that long it's getting a bit getting a bit loose there that's just a matter of a bolt i've just got to tighten up so love i'm still loving it good armrest um sorry excuse the mess like i said totally unprepared i'm not a pig i promise i'm normally pretty organized um but yeah i've got a nice little pouch there my missus puts her tablet in there for reading and i've got my deflators and torch and flint and all that kind of stuff in there which is handy so that's good um cup holder is a thing of discussion um this is just one from autobahn and i just pretty much put some foam inserts in there that it came with and just and then i put a little block of foam underneath to support this extension um just a like a, a foam esky i just cut a chunk out of it had a nice rounded shape to it so it looks nice nice and smooth so yeah put a bottle there coffee cup there coffee cup there solves that problem uh storage is definitely a bit of an issue anyway i'll stop waffling about the cab there's other stuff i'll i'll make another video and i'll go into more detail about the pros and cons of the design aspect of things but i'll just show you what i've done with this car for now uh where's the latch here we go all righty gas struts you don't get that with the new toyotas unless you buy a like a you know seventy eighty thousand dollar one <laughs> um i put in a optima yellow top battery uh, i made a video about this and you can check it out if you want it's not super informative but you know it can be done it is pretty tight but this has not moved an inch since i put it in um reasons for that so i can run a winch and and headlights and stereo as well uh, at camp without it going flat um haven't had any issues with any of the dpf and the sensors i know ruthie mentioned recently mentioned he had 150 dollar part that failed on his um, i did get dirty fuel i quite often go out rural tracks and um i've been in limp mode for hundreds of k's in the past so i put on a um Oh, what is this one direction plus there you go pro vent catch can it's got a proper digital sensor with a little buzzer inside and a led light to tell you that, that it's uh, it's working every time you turn the car and it lets you know it's all it's all um it's doing its thing that's been a life changer i didn't even have to dump the fuel that i had dirty fuel in my tank i just popped that in there and and uh cycled it over and it was fine um check the element and they had a little bit of crap in there but it wasn't too bad these common rails are pretty uh, sensitive. You need to have really clean fuel. 100% recommend that. Um, got a catch can. 
Now, I made a big mistake when I first installed this. Um, I didn't put the tap on the bottom <clears throat> for the hose. And if you have a look in here, uh, where is it? There you go. Is that it? Yep, there it is right there. So this thing, I was getting oil coming down and because there's no tap, sand was getting stuck in there and trapped. And I was working its way back up the hose all the way into the filter and it was actually clogged the filter was clogged i'm super lucky i didn't do any damage to my engine i checked the inlet and outlet hoses on there i checked the factory out uh outlet hose and inlet hose clean as a whistle very very lucky could have been i could have got sand ingress in there or anything i don't know but uh yeah you can make sure you make sure you put the tap on the end of that that hose for your drain for your drainage um to learn that the hard way got a clean element in there now uh check my manifold <clears throat> clean as a whistle my brother's got uh he's got about forty thousand, fifty almost on his mahindra and his manlet inlet manifold has started carboning up not real bad but you know mine's clean it's clean as a whistle clean as the day i bought it and that's because i put it on when it had 500 k's on the clock so got onto it early um what else can i tell you about it <clears throat> I don't know. That's too much. It's a lot to unpack uh, for such a basic car. It's it's really different. It definitely has a road presence. You know, people definitely notice it. Doesn't mean they necessarily like it. I copped a lot of flack for it being ugly. Admittedly, when I first saw it, I thought it was a bit, you know, not your normal everyday sort of ute you see on the road, which is it's cool. I like I like being different. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Definitely had some questions. Most people that are enthusiasts, that are genuine about, you know, they're not biased about being driving something different. They'll come over and have a chat and suss it out. And yeah, the, it's, uh, I've almost rolled it a couple of times. It's certainly capable with that locker in the back end. You gotta, now I've got extra weight on the roof. I'm gonna have to be careful about that. Um, it's got a pretty narrow wheel track for the actual height of the car. It's kind of deceiving, especially once you put a bit of weight in it. You got a rooftop tent. Um, once I put some more weight in the bottom end, that'll probably help level it out. As you can see, the offset for the wheels is pretty ridiculous. Um, that's a factory flare with a factory wheel. It just sits right inside the guard. So um, you can get a negative 18 um, offset, I think it is, or neg 13s, I think they are, for a R16 size rim. Um, and then that'll make it flush with the guard. And then I'll probably put some 265s. 70s um, on there just to get the speedo spelt on and give me a little bit more clearance and a bit more rubber um, put some tints on the car from day one ceramic stuff not really sure exactly about the technology but it's been great um, I've got a little I put a banner in there just to help cut down the light there's one thing you notice when you first buy this car is that there is a lot of windscreen there <laughs> it's vertical more than most cars these days but that, that little strip there is just perfect height for me. Um, I'm only 5'10", 5'11". Uh, if you're taller than that, I don't recommend getting it as low as I have. That's uh, right there on the mirror. But um, yeah, for the long drives with a glare late in the afternoon, it's good. Um, anyways, guys, I don't know. I'll probably wrap it up there because it's not really informative. I'm just having a bit of a blab. But um, I just wanted to at least make an effort and put this video up there for you and um i just i guess want to say i'm really grateful uh grateful for the mahindra community people that i've met uh, i'm grateful i've got a four-wheel drive um i can still afford to get out there and see nature and meet like-minded people with some of the best people i've met through the mahindra community and just being out in the bush um locally it's um i'll uh you guys, if there's anything you want to know about my car, just just let me know in the comments, and I'll I'll make a dedicated video. I might do a dedicated one on the San Hema. Uh, that's a Calvary Gen Two. Great tent, but not for the going price. I got this on special, so for what I paid for it, it was worth it. Uh, I got the new Kings Plus, which has just come out. That's the new 270. It's fully self-standing, so that wraps right around to the past your bonnet and right past the tailgate. So uh, tested that out in the wind. It's been pretty good. But, um, yeah, anyway, Jones is my name. Um, I'm the founder of the Curry Cruiser Club. If you own one, join. If you don't, um, go join the Mahindra Australia Club. Once you've made the right decision, 
and come join us. <laughs> we just uh, we do it that way just to help keep the riffraff out and um, keep it all relevant, you know, because it's exciting buying a car and I love helping people, but um, our page is more based around uh, owner knowledge and just people that already own cars so that we can organize events and stuff. We haven't held any yet. Um, things have been pretty full on. Pretty, we've, everyone's busy with life, you know. But um, once we get um, settled in a bit and things start happening, we'll, we'll try and organize some local meetups and get to know people more. So yeah, get some more exposure for the Mahindra. I don't know about you guys, man, but I love this car. And um, as much as I would love to buy the new global pickup model when that comes out, I don't think I'll part ways with this thing. I'm probably gonna keep it. Um, but yeah, time will tell. And Mahindra, if you're watching this, help a guy out. <laughs> Sponsor me or something. <laughs> I know all these, uh, what do you call it, uh, social media gurus, they always want something for nothing, you know, but I, f I think if you find true value in someone promoting your product, I'm your guy. I couldn't speak more highly of this car, I love it. And uh, anyways, um, enough blabbing from me. Just a little uh, note, you know, if there's any of you guys out there, men or women, doing it tough, going through trials, just uh, keep up the fight and... Uh, I just find that nature and good friends, good company, making memories is more important than working hours away from your family. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a bigger picture to making money and uh, trying to impress people, you know, the outward appearance. At the end of the day, if you're dead, what good is all your money, you know? You might as well be out here enjoying this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful earth we've got here beneath our feet. And uh, it's something we need to protect and uh, not take for granted. So, anyways, that's my message. Thanks for watching my video. I will do a proper review with pros and cons later. But um, yeah, I'll wait until uh, wait until the right time comes. Don't know when that will be, but anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. This is Jonesy, and um, if I forgot to mention you, leave me a comment in the in the in the comments section, and um, yeah, I'll have a chat to you. See us.